Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on the metal planer restoration and uh, we're getting into the clapper box. There's quite a few things in here that we're going to have to make new parts for and uh, do some work to to get it back going. And uh, I'm starting with the actual clapper box part here. This is the part that the cutter mounts to. It's called a clapper box because when it's in operation, it kind of pivots and makes that clapping noise. Now there are four studs that come up through this that you actually bolt the um, cutter onto. And uh, these studs are in pretty rough shape, all of them are. We're gonna be replacing all four of them. Uh, I got over here and started doing some measuring. I was a little bit surprised to find out that there are different dimensions and different specs on the top two holes versus the bottom two holes. I really don't quite understand why the differences are subtle. I mean, they're, they're not very big differences at all, but they are differences. And um, we're gonna have to work on the end down here. We're gonna have to make sure we take that into consideration between the two. Now, the threaded part that the nut goes on to, that is going to be the same on all of them. The originals, uh, one of them was a little bit bigger than the other, um, but I've just decided I'm going to go with all of them being the same size because some of these threads are uh, oddball sizes. I've ran into that in multiple places on this machine where back in the 1890s, roughly, when this machine was made, there were not the same standards, or there weren't any standards, I guess, on a lot of these thread pitches. So uh, we're gonna take everything to a standard thread pitch, uh, which is gonna be 5 8 11 as far as the, the nut goes. So uh, I've got a little drawing over here for me to work off of with the dimensions. I'm gonna have to make two different sets that are slightly different, and uh, let's get over on the lathe and get started doing some turning. I've got some one inch stock we're gonna be making this out of and I just got about a three foot piece going up through the headstock on the lathe. We'll just be pulling it out and cutting it off as we go. I'm gonna start by facing the end and uh, putting a, a center in there. It's long enough piece that I just wanna have a center on the end to give it some support. in here we're going to pull our stock out i'm just going to use the original one here as a gauge on how far i need to pull it out tighten this up and we're pulling our live center in here this will just give us some support and i'll lock that in place so this is the original stud and uh, first thing I want to do is turn the, the largest diameter, which is the head down here. Now this fits up into a one inch hole. The original here is about 980 thousandths. Uh, basically I just want to make it a little bit undersized so I got some clearance in there. So I'm going to touch off over here and I'm just going to take about 10 thou to start with. We'll see where we're at and decide where we want to go from there. Now it looks like we didn't quite clean up on there. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take about another five thou. And I believe we did clean up there. So that looks good and we're at 985, which is exactly where the original was. So that's good. All right, next on here, I want to turn down basically, I'm about to turn the whole thing, but turn it down to this shoulder here. I'm going to put a mark there. The overall length on this is not really critical. 
by any means, so I'm not worrying about making precise measurements here. But um, this gets turned down to, uh, I think, 750 thou. Yeah, it's about a thou over. We want to press fit there. It's actually measuring a little bit different, different places here. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over and make some measurements with a micrometer and also check that bore out real good. But I think we want to turn this just a little over three quarters of an inch. I've done some measuring over there and I think I want to take this down to 758 thousandths. Uh, looks like we'll be a nice interference fit uh, inside that piece. I'm just going to peel off a hundred thou here and just get it on down. Take another hundred thou here. All right, I'm gonna, we got about 12 thou to come off of this. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 10 thou and then uh, do a finish pass down here. Ooh, that's hot too. Tell you what, I think I'm gonna let it cool off so I can get a good measurement. When you're doing a really precision press fit like this, if you got heat in your part, uh, when it cools down, it's gonna shrink. And when you're working in the, you know, trying to hit a number by a thou or even less than a thou, it's very important that you don't have too much heat in your work. So. Um, We'll give this part some time to cool down, take another measurement, and go from there. All right, we let that cool down, and uh, I'm going to come in here and take just 10 thou off of this now. And we're going to get another measurement. And again, we're only really worried about right down in here, but we've got to turn the whole part down to get down to it. All right, so we're about 767. I'm going to 758. So I've got about 9,000 that still needs to come off of there. Yeah, we're just a shade over eight, maybe about four tenths it looks like, but I, I think that's gonna be just right. In fact, I'll tell you where we are, let's see. Yeah, four tenths. I'm gonna live with that. Um, I can always hit that with some memory cloth if I need to take it down some more. So now I wanna take it down to five eighths down to about this, uh, line I've got in here. So go ahead and take another hundred thou off of that. All right, we're about 650, going to 625. So I need to take 25 thou out of there. So we're right on 625. So that's right where we wanna be. The next thing I wanna do 
is if you look on the original, it's, it's got a little piece at the end that's turned down below the root diameter of the thread. So it's just kind of helped to get that thread on there and where you don't mar up the thread on that on the very end. I kind of like that. Uh, that's not always the way you do bolts, but here they are. I measured a 5 8 inch bolt. I need to take another 100 thou out of there. So we're going to remove 100 thou down just a little bit. Plenty. And break these corners. I'm break that one fairly heavy. Uh, I'm gonna put the break that one with the uh, threading tool, so I have the, the same angle on there. I'm gonna hit that one. come up here and break the corner here. Just removing any sharp edges and burrs. Just makes the part a lot friendlier to handle. Now I've got my threading tool. And I'm gonna come in here and just kinda put that angle on there to start the threads with. And we want to thread down to about right in there. And bring it in, touch it off here. I'm going to dial in about five thou. Got my machine slowed down. We're going to do a quick, do a quick test cut to make sure I got my thread pitch right. Wait for a number to come around here. We're looking for 11 threads per inch, and we are right on the money. So let's go ahead and uh, cut some threads. going to do a uh, just doing a blank pass here spring pass and we're going to check the fit with a nut a little bit tight still take a few more thou off of it we're getting real close though Test fit again. Perfect fit. I am just going to take a file, just kind of round this end over. I just put a chamfer on it. The original has more of a radius there. 
and I'd like the looks of that. So there's the original on top, the new one on the bottom. And again, we did uh, make the thread diameter a little bit smaller here to kind of match things up so everything will be the same. Uh, and that's going to be just fine. The other one is actually uh, closer to this 5 8 inch thread anyway. And I want them to all be the same. Uh, I apologize. I parted it off here, but my camera died, so I missed that shot. But we just used our parting tool, parted it off. I parted it off a little bit long, and the last step I'll do um, is flip this thing around and face off the back sides. I'll probably do that after I rough them all out because I got my bar in there right now. I'm going to go ahead and make the other three guys. I'm going to do those off camera, and then we'll bring you back at the end. I've got all four of my bolts made now and I've uh, taken out the stock and flipped these bolts around. Now what I want to do is face off the back side of that and get this to the proper thickness. So I've measured the original and on uh, at least two of these, this needs to be basically 350 thousandths thick. Right now we're at about 370, so I got a little over 20 thou to come off of those. So we'll come in here. And I'm just going to touch off. I'm going to use a dial indicator over here to measure how far I move in my carriage. I'm going to start with a 10 thousandths face. Now I can measure that and get an accurate measurement and figure out where we need to go to from here. Again, we're shooting for 350 thou. I need 10 more thou, so I'll dial in 10 more thou on my indicator. Move in 10 thou right there. And that should be right where we need to be. About a thou over, but that's going to be fine. Okay, and I am going to just uh, put a chamfer tool on here. I'm getting a little bit of run out, uh, so it's not going to be uniform all the way around, but no big deal. I just want to break that edge. That's all I need right there. And I believe that this one is done. Let me do the other three. And I think we'll have this job knocked out. So here we go, guys. I think we have got all these uh, new studs here made and they are ready to go back and reinstall in there. A couple of comments, because uh, I know I'm going to get some comments. I'm going to have some people say, well, I don't think you should have turned that down from the larger diameter. And again, these were basically 3 quarter 10 uh, is the threads on here. But I want you to notice they had to come in here and grind out a section because it was too thick for the uh, for some of the cutters to fit down past these studs. Um, and by going to the 5 eighths, hopefully I'm going to eliminate the need for that cut out there. And uh, I really just do not understand why they had two different size studs. It seems like to me they would have all been the same originally, but the dimensions on the heads, the dimensions here on uh, the part that presses in, both of them are different on both sides. These are turned down to, it's actually a little over uh, 5 8 So 5 eighths is 625 thousandths, which is what I turned out here. These were actually 650 thousandths, 10 threads per inch. Really oddball size thread. Uh, th there is no, uh, in today's world, I guess you could say, there's no standard thread pitch that matches that for us that size. In fact, 650 thousandths is not even a, um, a, a nominal size. It's close to 2130 seconds, which is 656 thousandths. Um, and maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was a 21 30 seconds 10 thread. I don't know. I've ran into some really weird thread pitches on this machine, but uh, we are going to take everything down. Everything's going to be 5 8 11, which is a standard size. And uh, I'll be making nuts for these. I've shown how I made those nuts before uh, out of just some hex stock. Basically, just uh, drill a hole and tap it with a tap. So uh, 
uh, there you go. That's where we're at. Uh, one other comment I'll make is I'm sure some people notice they got the holes in the bottom here. Uh, what are those there for? Well, when these were made originally, they, they, there were centers on both sides. They probably turned this between centers on a lathe. And that was very common in that particular time period. Uh, just about everything that was done in a shop was done between centers. And one of the reasons was, was in the 1890s, uh, chucks on a lathe were kind of hard to come by. They were extremely expensive and really not even available. And in a lot of manufacturing situations, they did their work on the lathe turning between centers. So they basically had a center on both ends, had a drive dog on one end turning it. I use that technique from time to time. Uh, but in today's world, we, we have chucks are readily available, collet chucks, uh, three-jaw chucks, four-jaw chucks. It's just a lot easier to grip that work. So there's really no function for that center on the ends here other than that's the way that it was manufactured. And I used a slightly different method to do that. Uh, I guess if I wanted to have been 100% true to, the, uh, to reproducing these parts, I could have turned them between centers, but I just didn't really see a need to do it, so I didn't. These parts are done. Uh, they are not quite ready to go back into the clapper box. I need to do some more work on that. So we will be showing those later on. But basically, these should all be a very nice interference fit. This little section here will uh, probably freeze these parts. We'll heat the other part up, use the press, press them in there. And then whenever the temperatures equalize, it will be a very nice tight press fit. And then we will also drill and probably tap and put a little set screw in the ends and that'll just kind of give it a key to keep it from turning and that's the way a lot of these were you can see the the holes there they just drove a pin in there it was not tapped i'll probably tap them because it's easier to get that pin out later if it's a, a tapped um, a hole there so anyway there we go uh, i think we're done with this job so guys, that'll be a wrap. I uh, got these parts knocked out. One step closer to getting this clapper box uh, back together. Still got several parts I need to get made for it, but uh, ah, slowly but surely we'll get there, get this part back on the machine, and hopefully get back on track and getting that metal planer up and going and cutting those first chips. And guys, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are appreciated, as are those thumbs up. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video.